a charge controller to play with today and here's the box and it's MPPT um, and it's a boost solar charge controller so a little bit different from uh, other MPPT solar charge controllers we've looked at and uh, inside the box here it is it's uh, well it's nothing to write home about it's a black box with a blue sticker MPPT boost solar charge controller input voltage 12 to 50 volts and the battery voltage can be anything from 24 36 48 60 72 volt systems and uh, it can also be self-setting couldn't be more simple this just uh, positive and negative inputs for the solar panel and uh, positive and negative on the battery and uh, well, there's an inline fuse, and this one's fused at 10 amps. On the back um, is just a sticker, and this is a model CKE EV300. And I think that gives us a clue there to the uh, idea that this is for electric vehicles and probably most likely e bikes. And on the end here, we've got the indicator for solar, an indicator for battery, um, four seven segment displays here, charge display, and uh, a little tactile switch for uh, setting this up. So here's the manual, just one sheet of paper, and I was right, this is the e-bike version and uh, the English is pretty good and it's fairly self-explanatory uh, you know solar if the lights off there's no solar coming in if the lights on it's working fine on the back of the uh, manual here it does suggest that actually the MPPT voltage range is between 15 to 45 volts so that's where you need your maximum power point from your solar panels and uh, it's less or equal to 300 watts and we can see for a 24 volt system for example it's going to charge up to 28.8 volts and there's a claimed efficiency of greater or equal to 95 percent and finally in the bottom left hand corner here we have the child lock instructions it does suggest that if you open up the side where the display is there is a small red uh, dip switch in there which you can turn on and therefore stop anybody messing with the settings once you set them so uh, that does sound like uh, quite a handy feature so that dip switch is presumably behind this panel so i think i'm going to open it up because that obviously doesn't void my warranty does it and uh, also we might be able to see inside here if the if there is an inductor and therefore if we really think it's going to be doing MPPT. So with those four screws taken out, I'm just going to loosen off this grommet as well so the uh, cables can slide through. And uh, yeah, that's coming away. And uh, we can see straight away two dip switches there, marked one and two. And on is to the outside of the case. You can also see a diode in there and uh, an electrolytic capacitor and in fact if I get a torch that's a pretty decent sized inductor there right at the back so that's looking very promising now as I put this back together it's worth noting that although there are seals around the cable itself there's no seal whatsoever um, between this plate and the case or uh, any of the other components so uh, whatever waterproof rating this comes with it's probably not at all waterproof now the only other boosting MPPT solar charge controller that I'm aware of is this the MPT 7210A from Ming He and I've nearly bought one of these on a couple of occasions to take a look at but there is one big issue i don't believe this is really mppt in the truest sense of the term maximum power point tracking and that's because of this figure here the red 
solar voltage because that is manually set in the software you tell it where your maximum power point for your solar panels is and it attempts to get as close to that as possible i would refer to this particular solar charge controller as maximum power point targeting not maximum power point tracking but this device doesn't have a fancy screen and multiple buttons so the only way for this particular MPPT solar charge controller to find the maximum power point of a solar panel is to do it all by itself. So without further ado let's connect it up to a solar panel. Now as I was stripping these wires to put some connectors on I noticed that the solar cable is uh, well I think it's 10 AWG although it's not marked uh, and does look quite copperish whereas the uh, battery um, wires well to me they look more like steel um, and they are 16 AWG so that's a little bit peculiar to put different wire on the input and the output so without further ado let's plug in a solar panel and yes I am plugging the solar panel in first onto the input here via the port panel the battery connection is completely uh, disconnected and that's because this should power itself entirely from the solar panel so let's plug in 50 watts of monocrystalline panel which is under full sun here today and uh, if we have a look at the port panel we can see uh, it's close to its open circuit voltage um, at 20 volts just over um, and this device is pulling somewhere in the region of 70 milliamps 50 to 70 milliamps um, i suspect what's going on is that the led display is flicking in fact there it is yeah so p 20.0 c 00.0 b 57.6 okay so it's p panel 20 volts there c not sure at the moment b 57.6 it might be in uh, 48 volt mode and of course we've got nothing connected so should we uh, connect up a battery now and see if it sorts itself out right so a bit of red tape over this seven segment display makes it a lot easier to read so the panel's still at 20 volts here and c is that charge is that going to show watts b 57.6 so i'm going to try and set this to there we go so it's in 48 volt mode as we suspected so let's press and hold now we're flashing 60 volt 72 self self mode where we can set it up but i'm just going to set it to 24 for the moment press and hold and i think that's saved although now the screen's not showing anything there we go 20 volts no power i'm assuming and the battery is at 28.8 which is the maximum charge for the battery so uh, i think it's time to plug a battery in okay so i've got a 7s lithium pack here uh, currently charged to just under 25 volts so reasonably under charge for a 24 volt system and uh, we've got the port power on the left showing the solar panel information and the uh, port power on the right showing the battery information and the solar charge controller in the middle showing the information it's showing as well so uh, let's plug in the battery and we can see straight away that power 19.5 so we've got battery 26.3 power 16 and a half c capacity hmm our uh, manual doesn't explain those figures but as we can see the uh, panel's been brought down to what 15 16 and a half volts there we're getting 1.89 amps coming in 28 watts so perhaps it's claiming 23 i don't know this is a bit odd but uh, 
going into the battery here we've got 26 watts so 28 watts coming in at 15 volts and uh, 26 watts going into the batteries at 26 volts well it does seem to be doing dc to dc conversion at least 16 volts over here 1.7 amps 27 watts um, 26 volts 1 amp 24 watts going into the battery on this side so it's definitely converting the voltage now this is a little bit low for the maximum power point of my panel which on the uh, sticker on the back at least says 17.5 volts so uh, this is a volt away or perhaps a little bit more at times and interestingly now a cloud has just gone over the power's dropped quite significantly here just six five watts at the moment coming in four watts going into the battery and now the c value is zero zero point four um so perhaps i don't know it is the conversion losses um it really does puzzle me that c number i'm clearly being quite stupid it's probably something really obvious now the batteries are at 28.8 so you would hope that the current going into them would start reducing now and uh, so far there's no real sign of that happening so i'll leave this running for a little bit and see if we can capture the fact that the uh, current reduces to keep the batteries at 28.8 and not go dramatically over that voltage we're moving into the evening now and the power is dropping away but i've been quite pleased how well this has performed these batteries have never gone over 28.8 and uh, it's held them there quite sufficiently and the current has been dropping away a little bit as well so it seems to be doing exactly what it should do the last little test i want to check is whether we remove the solar power so we're um, imagining we've had a night of no solar and then we start it up again will it run correctly straight away so if i disconnect the solar panel uh, we can see um, that has dropped significantly there's obviously a capacitor on the input there which is dropping away the mppt solar charge controller seems to be off and in the morning when we start getting voltage what happens Oh, a nice little animation on the screen it's in 24 volt mode and well it kicks in and starts uh, creating power and charging the battery so that seems to be uh, pretty impressive that's exactly what we want to see all right so let's manually try and set the termination voltage if we press and hold the set button um, for a few seconds it should start flashing there we are 36 48 60 72 and self termination voltage mode press and hold the button and we then start going into this uh, final charge voltage 28.9 and presumably we can press and hold that yes we can so you know if we wanted to finish our charge at 36 volts that would be possible and presumably you just let that save because pressing and holding the set button increases the voltage there we go i think that's saved so we're now in the mode which if i press that button should show there we go hold it for a second should show that we finished charge at 36 volts so that was more straightforward than I expected. So I've been quite impressed with the uh, CTKEV 300 MPPT solar charge controller. It's a pretty nifty little device and I quite like the information they're managing to get out these four digits of seven segment display, which I forgot can be switched off entirely by tapping the set button or switched on. And it seems to remember that setting when it turns off and on again overnight the product is a little bit niche having solar panels lower than your battery voltage is a bit peculiar but uh, actually i think that's really handy for the e-bike people because you only need one small solar panel to charge up your e-bike across the week perhaps uh, when you take it out each sunday uh, despite what any listing 
or uh, the product manual says this isn't waterproof at all i wouldn't have this outside in any way shape or form there are no seals or anything on the end caps and uh, in fact this one's got gaping holes in it around the leds the device itself gets a tiny bit warm but only warm to the touch and it is in this metal enclosure which does seem to have fins for heat sinking so all in all i think this is a, a decent device hopefully you've enjoyed this video if you did give me a thumbs up subscribe down below comment if you can and i'll see you next time thanks for watching